I kind of would like to get a place in New York, maybe Upper West Side. Upper West Side, you know, you have Riverside Park and you have Central Park and you have Zay Bars. What more? Zabars, that's all I need. In the middle, a, right? If between. I can get a good rugelach, I'll be great. What uh, What are the rents like up there? Um, boy, a, <laughs> who's uh, laughing? A studio. <laughs> studios now are like twenty eight hundred. Yeah, that's the same all and over. One bedrooms like thirty six hundred. I was looking at a walk up in Greenwich Village. It was like basically a studio for three thousand. I want. I need a. I kind of would need a one bedroom. I can. I can live with a little railroad kitchen, but I, your your place is perfect. When are you moving out? <laughs> Never. How long have you been in that building? About forty five years. Whoa! And it's rent controlled, right? My studio. They can charge whatever they want. You're kidding? Because, no. You you are only allowed to have one rent stabilized apartment in New York City. Oh, and you have Although two. We have a some guy in office has four, and he says, "Well, I don't understand the rent laws." <laughs> so, so I have a rent stabilized apartment in the back, and here every year or two they just say, "Okay, your new rent is." Oh wow! Whatever they want. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. So yeah, that's really too bad. But it but it's kept a for a relatively affordable. Yeah. No. No. I I mean you have it's a great place. I would yeah. Be, that's 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 about just your place is just about right. But are you on the ground floor? Yes. I guess that's good in one now, respect. Now when I moved up. in, I was in the basement. Oh wow. And then they took the front off the you know it it had a stoop. Like the old building. Yeah. And I had to go down three steps and through an iron gate. I love that. Did you like that? Yeah. That's in um, uh, the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. She's got that kind of basement apartment. Yeah. And and you look out the window and you see people's feet walk, <laughs> as they walk by. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, my apartment's not quite that far down but um it, it, it's close um, i'm three steps down from street level oh so you're still in that basement in the front in the back my backyard just goes straight on oh, okay out. but in the front you have to go up three steps yeah i've i've been to where you are right now i've been yeah to yeah exactly yeah. yeah 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 all right my friend i think it's time okay, for your buddy. show and it's time for me to stop bugging you no problem. It's great. Au revoir, my friend. Take care, buddy. I think the they call uh, his neighborhood what? The Upper West uh, upper Side? Upper West or? Side. It's called the Upper West Side. Yeah. We were in Morningside Heights, I think. No, we were up by like 120th. What What street are you at? You know, I think that I'm on 82nd. The hospital West I was born in was on 81st, but I think that the they were in the apartment building's been tear, torn down, and they were in the Frederick Douglass apartments, which they think oh, was okay. a little uh, further uptown. Yeah, they actually had several places, so I don't know. I have to, you know what? That's one of the things I'm going to find out next week with my mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Oh what yeah. What's our address? <laughs> yeah. Hey, mom. Make a note. See ya. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye, Leo. Hello, Dick. Hey, John. Well, I think I'm ready to do the show. Are you ready to do I the show? I am ready, too. I am ready. And you have the last little uh, bit of the video oh, tour, right? Uh, uh, I, I can get that ready. Um, okay, very me, good. I didn't import that last photo you sent me. Yeah, and I sent you a little one-minute video. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, Loke. Yeah. Empty pockets. L.A. Eric, T.I. Gives one. Okay, so Magoo. I will. I will. Uh, I will get that um, the the tour video ready after we get underway. Uh, okay, very good. Yeah. All right. So if you are ready, yes, sir. Let's do it. Then I would say that I am close to being ready. Also, DDR one <laughs> in preview, and I got this potted up. I got the recordings going. That's a sign. That's a good sign. 
And I think I'm on the stream. Let's see. Yep, I see myself on the stream. So that perfect. Everybody can see us. All right, we oh, have a uh, 540. We have 540 episodes of Gizfiz. Wow. All right. So this is Gizfiz episode 540, recorded on Wednesday, September 6th, 2023. And it begins not long after I turn my microphone off in three, <laughs> two. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for. It's the Giz Fizz with the Giz Whiz. It's kind of like Cheese Whiz. It's the Giz Fizz. And now your host, Matt Mattis Ryder and the Giz Whiz, Dick DiBartolo. Welcome to Giz Fizz Totally Unimproved. <laughs> Episode 540, I can't believe it. Uh, 540, like we're coming up to like 10 years. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have uh, pictures from George Davis that you will caption. Fun facts from George Davis. We're going to do a snappy answer. Actually, we're going to do a stupid question. You'll do the snappy answer. We'll do some logo, some I'm not saying you're stupid and we'll end with Match Game. There's a little video tour of Disneyland, the last part of it. We're going to look at gadgets that when they first came out were amazing and now are laughable. Uh, and first, we always ask, who wants to be chat room? Celebrity of the week. All right. So we're going to start with our photos, and let's do photo number one. If you're not following with video, it is a bird in flight uh, eating food off a vine, okay? Chat room, I don't know what kind of bird this is, but it's a pretty smart bird because it's eating in flight, Little bird flapping its wings while it's eating some fruit hanging down from a vine. Tech Dino said, uh, honeysuckle bird, angel winged birdie. Uh, okay, those are some of the answers. In flight, these in flight meals are getting ridiculous. Pretty bird diet. A uh, dinner is served. Acro bird, uh, drive through lane for the birds. That's a berry sucker, yellow belly sap sucker. It's a passenger bird. It's a hungry bird. I've heard of birds that have sex mid-flight. Hummingbirds eat your heart out. A uh, bird doing flower arrangements. That's funny, Ranger Rick. Uh, he's humming because he doesn't remember the words. Man DJI is making some pretty elaborate drones. Good one. Oh, uh, smallest oranges ever. Boy, the lunch you have to go through to get some chow. If you can tell what color the berry is, you need to stop now. When you got to eat, you got to eat. One day I'll be on a talent show. Tarzan, bird of the jungle. Hummers actually hum. Birds aren't real. The berries are. And we'll end with look one. Those aren't berries. They're tree doodads. Okay. And George says, for the bird capturing food from hanging vines, my caption is, oh, wow. I was in the right spot with my camera to get this shot of this bird eating. Uh, okay, photo number two from George is, wow, it is a major lightning bolt with lots of little bolts coming from it. That's a major lightning strike. A major lightning strike. 
Um, it's a live reverb mic. It's not fool. It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. A bolt out of the blue, lightning round the head. Oh, that's funny. He man and masters of the universe. Zeus must be really pissed. Lightning bolt with varicose veins of electricity. Uh, Mama lightning bolt and baby bolt. Well, that's funny. Uh, I better get the heck out of here. Uh, the sky has varicose veins, says Geek Wannabe. I told you, Doc, I need help with these varicose veins. Uh, did you see the? Did you see it go ground to cloud? Whoops, I think I connected these electric wires wrong. Where's my kite? Did he strike me dead if I lied? When varicose veins go hot, it's a shocker. The bolt that struck Ben Franklin's kite, kite the one guy who swore in the Bible and lost. Uh, is this making a point with his wife, her? Thunder, thunder, thundercats, ho. Because one says, I'm shocked. Raven, you better knock on wood so I don't get struck. Demos, love over gold from Dire Straits. James, this, that's one way to charge my Tesla. Um, I bet Ben Franklin is out there with a kite. I'm ready to bring back Frankenstein, both from Caesar. Mandy, Mr. Tesla, I think your coil is a little much. Uh, 1.21 gigawatts. I have the power. Shocking photo. And we'll end with Magoo. Supercharger. George says, for the huge lightning bolt, my caption is, yikes. I could feel my hair starting to rise when that bolt hit the tree half a block away. Uh, okay. Photo three from George is, uh, looks like the rapids and it's a raft of, can't tell. They might be all students or all kids or all girls. I think it's all young people, whatever it is. It's a raft. Looks like it's in the rapids. And there's two, four, six, eight, about a dozen people in it. Let's see what George put. Uh, George put 12 people going down the rapids. Okay. So it's 12 people in a raft going down the rapids. Uh, Ship of Fools, team building exercise. This is no way. This is no way. This is no way. We're a bit of course from the Titanic. Make a right here. <laughs> Is now a bad time to mention my fear of water? Uh, okay, everybody row backwards as fast as you can. Kid, student, girls. No one told me I'd have to row. It's the last time I take a low-budget cruise. Rapid relief. 12 people in the boat all wearing the same. This except there's always one. Oh, you're right. Um... Here, put your foot on this hole. Hey, buddy, get your ear out of, get your oar out of my ear. Where's the next boat stop? Swedish rowing team. Pedal harder. Jehovah's Witnesses won't catch us. That's very funny, Mandy. We need to get this beard at a party. Stop smacking me with the oar. Illustration for row, row, row your boat. I just caught a fish. Where's the bathroom on this boat? Well, I'm going to die someday. One on my bucket list, that'll never happen. Hurry, right, there's a shark coming. Water crossing gone wrong. Uh, who yanked on me? The helmet stops you from drowning. And we'll end with Geek Wannabe. This is not the time to drink a beer. Oh, I'll throw in Gumby. Faster, faster. The fish are laughing at us. Joyce said, for the 12 people going down the rapids, my caption is, I told you we should have waited a month longer before trying this. Okay, photo four from George is, oh, it's, um, an archery tournament 
we see four targets with a lot of arrows in them. Okay, it looks like an archery contest or archery training ground target, four targets with a lot of arrows. Um, all right, Robin Hood and his Merry Men after a beer festival. Game over, darn. Nobody seems to be shooting at the third board. Oh, you're right. I think they missed the apple on my head. Robin Hood conference. Okay, Bob, now go stand there with the apple on your head. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Someone tell William I missed the bullseye. Target three had a lot of misses. You're right. Someone is shooting with mixed arrows. Okay, now split my arrow in the bullseye. If Robin Head shoots this bad, he won't get any of my money back. Uh, does the county hit a bullseye on the wrong target? Are you Robin or Maid Marion? What do you mean I got a bullseye? I was aiming for the target next to that one. And we'll end with, where's the apple? Okay. George says, oh, he just calls this archery. Okay. For the photo of archery, my caption is, one of the four of us who gets the most bull eye, bull's eyes out of 50 shots gets a hundred bucks. Um, okay. Photo five is, wow, photo five is weird, okay. Um, I imagine this is a Photoshop, but I'm not 100% sure, okay. It's two sort of strange looking men. And judging from their eyes, they might be siblings. That's, that's, all, that's all I got. Oh, what did George put? Uh, <laughs> George said, for the selfie of the two of us, uh, says George. Uh, let me look up really quick. Uh, Pepper Boys, Helium and some kind of pencil necks. No, Crippy, Uncanny Valley. Bartender, a couple of long necks. Uh, should have stuck our heads in that vacuum. Inspiration for Alfred E. Newman. I bet they're both fashion models. We'll work for Schmenk. Schmenzies? Uh Pencil neck geeks. Two old men faces on kids' bodies. Jehovah Witnesses waiting to paddle away from. We are your AI masters. What me worry. Someone is terrible at Photoshopping. Alfred E. Newman cousins from down south. Alfred E. Newman's twin brothers. Gumby got it. Big head family reunion. When I said get ahead, this is not what I meant. Bobbleheads. We're from the planet Rube. Take us to your leader. Background is clearly photoshopped. A smile, you're on camera. And we'll end with Empty Pockets Crest Mascots. Um, well, and Caesar said, we are aliens pretending to be human. Did we do a good job? Uh, George said, for the selfie of the two of us, my caption is, you're right. We do look like cartoon people. Uh, okay, photo six of six from George Davis is, oh, okay, this one, the photo is easy to describe. A young girl in a chair playing a violin. A young girl in a chair playing a violin. Big chair, little girl, tiny violin, fiddle. Now play Mozart, will you now? And now to play Cherub and Fugue. Fiddler on the chair. Where's the rest of the orchestra? She seems to have wings. Uh, first chair violinist. 
I am really playing a tiny violin for you, practicing for the square dance tonight. Uh, after I do this, I do an Irish jig. No fiddling around. I don't want to play Happy Birthday again. For my next number, I'll do one of my own pieces by Victor Herbert. Um, can you play The Devil Went Down to Georgia? Violin or viola? Mumble, mumble, why can't I go out to play? I'd rather be playing Nintendo. Fiddler on the roof, I had enough trouble getting up on the chair. Mortron. Play Freebird. Hey, this girl's got talent, says Giz One. How long do I have to practice this? No shoes, no music. Future Juilliard graduate. Logan Five, no shoes, no service. Uh, James, bring your flute. We'll have a duet. And we'll end with, what is what is that? Inagata da Vida. Inagata da Vida. Inagata da Vida next. And we'll end with, I want a full-size violin. All right. George said, for young girl playing the violin, my caption is, I've only been playing for one and one half years. And the song I'm playing now is 10 minutes long. Yes, I am pretty good. Okay. Fun facts. George Davis continues to entertain us. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. How many people are there? who are actually named LOL. How many actual people are there named LOL? I mean, I can see somebody saying, oh, let's name the kid LOL. Oh, I'm getting some answers. Uh you know, people are wacky these days. I'm going with, uh, oh, wow, 125. Jamma B? Uh, 124. No, 126. <laughs> no, I'm saying, I'll say oh, what are you uh, playing, 50, 50, 5 0. Okay. Um, 9,000? No. 47. Most of most people are shooting. Wow. Wow. 12. All right. Let's see. There are actually 152 people named L O L. So Becky, you were very close. 152. Oh, this is a great question. Let me put my hand over the finger over the answer. What percentage of people in the United States believe there are extraterrestrials that are disguised as humans and are living among us? You know, percentage I can tell you one that we all know. A uh, former engineer who we had to let go when uh, things got bad in uh, COVID, Jeff. He was way he into he he aliens among us. Oh, he's not one of them. He he claims he sees oh, no, them. No, he was not one of them. He was a TV. He did the Giz Fizz. He worked here. I don't think oh, he well, was one you, of them. You, yeah, you could <laughs> no, be an he alien. He was do... way into that. Oh, okay. Um, well, then you might have a better answer. The number of percentage of people who think... We have ETs dressed as humans and are among us. Boy, uh, 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 15%. I'm going more like uh, a third, like Jamez. A third? Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. The percentage of people in the U.S. who believe in ET are living amongst us as humans. What was your answer, Jamie B.? I'm saying a third, 33%. 33%. 
Okay. And uh, yeah. Jeff is, he's still on YouTube. Virtual Rock Show is his YouTube channel. And he's, I haven't, uh, I know that after he left, he was putting new stuff up there. I haven't seen any new stuff lately. But he uh, he does a little drum solo things. Drum, not solos, he plays drums along with his music. Virtual, virtual something show. Virtual Rock virtual, Show. Virtual. Oh, okay. Virtual Rock Show is his YouTube channel. Um, okay, the answer is 20% of people in the U.S. <laughs> believe they are still amongst us. Okay. Still? Um, there are only two people in the United... No, there are only two people in the world who know the recipe to Coca-Cola. What, what's the big deal? You take Coca and you add cola and you're done. Anyway, I'll finish the it's question. The, it's the amount. Only, it's the percentages. You got to get yeah, the right Coca. 50, it's 50-50. Oh, uh, see, you know it too. <laughs> only two people in the world that know the recipe for Coca-Cola. They cannot fly in the same plane together in case... The plane crashes. All right. That's just a fact with no question. And I would want to say to Mandy the Clown, buckaroo. Oh, okay. It's just between me and Mandy the Clown. Oh, okay. Very good. Um, they're the very first call on his new iPhone that Steve Jobs made in 2007 was to Starbucks. Any idea what he ordered? Okay. The question goes on and says it was to Starbucks and he ordered the well, I took out what he ordered to see if anybody wants to make a guess. The very first fried call, chicken. He ordered fried chicken. And his new iPhone that Steve Jobs made in 2007, the first call was to Starbucks. And he ordered somebody. Oh, a couple of people are very close. Jim and B, you got an answer? Uh, coffee? Uh, no, I don't. I don't know. Uh, okay. Well, we, sh we uh, not only was it a latte, you could call it a grand latte because the complete statement is... Steve Jobs made a call to Starbucks and ordered 4,000 lattes. I guess <laughs> for everybody at Apple at the time. Oh, this is great. You know, I, think, uh, I think that was actually uh, during a presentation, the presentation of the iPhone, the first iPhone. I think, and he I think you're it right. For everybody in the audience. In the audience. I Now I do remember that. I do remember that. Um, did you get the graphic uh, uh, for the last question or question five about the billion dollars? I have that. Okay. Um, if you had a billion dollars and you spent a thousand dollars a day, it would take you about 2,500 years to spend it all and George sent a little diagram because there are a lot of billionaires, right? So this is oh here it is. At least one percent of them. Suppose you had a billion dollars, you could spend five thousand dollars a day for more than five hundred years. Breaking it down even further, you would have to spend a hundred thousand dollars a day for the next 25 years i wonder if this is taking into uh, account the interest you'll be making on the money you haven't spent I yeah bet exactly not. probably not you could get a cd and you get four percent um how much room does a billion dollars take up if you had a uh, billion dollar bill, it would be like the size of a dollar, a billion dollar bill. Yeah, but now they're saying it in one dollar bills, it would cover an area of four square miles 
or the equivalent of 2,555 acres. Wow. Ah, <laughs> Keith Wannabe says, I will sign up for that spending challenge. Eric Duckman said, I'm getting 4.5% on my savings. Um, dump, um, oh, wait. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. It, there is an additional page. There is a six here. True or false? Okay, our final question from George Davis. True or false? Whales create a new song to sing every year. True or false? Whales create a new song to sing every year. Boy, it's right down the middle. I, boy. <laughs> Bill says they just modify the same song. True, and they release it just in time for Christmas, says Johnny Monday. Uh, sure, why not, says Magoo. <laughs> Stu says copyright won't let them do more than two. I want to believe it, Reverb Mike. True, but they still like the old hits. These are very funny answers. <laughs> Gumby said it's true, but the whales get the share from the record company. These are very funny. True, because one whale copyrights the last one. Uh, and they put it on Spotify, says Mandy. These are very funny chat room. Whales create a new song to sing each year is true. Of course, they get sick of the, uh, uh, the you know, you do a song for a year and you go, God, I'm sick of this. I got to write something well, new. Well, you know, I think they probably have swum around the world and made sure everybody's heard it by then. Yeah, you know, you once know, everybody's you're right. heard it, you have a new one to sing yeah. as you swim around the world. You're absolutely right. George, thank you so much, George. These are great. Um, okay. Uh, 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 um, we're going to do some logo. You're probably right. Log one says, I, I think they don't sound that different from us. Oh, a card with a theme. Kids eat it up. Uh, 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 kids eat it up. What snack that smiles back has a mascot named Finn? Boy, I don't know this. What snack that smiles back has a mascot named Finn? Good Yuma, Goldfish, Flapper Cakes, Frozen Face Fritters, Huckfin Motor Oil. <laughs> Dolphin Doodles, Escargo, Snickers, Snicker Doodles. Alpha D noms. That's very funny. Uh, Jamie V, any guess? Well, I did not know, but the chat room has convinced me that it's goldfish. It is indeed goldfish. Oh, this is so easy. Finish this slogan from a pizzeria. It's not delivery. It's blank. Finish this slogan. Uh, no. Finish this slogan from a pizzeria. It's not delivery. It's uh, yeah. I I actually like this product a lot. 
Wow, I think Raven spelled it right, too. Do you guys have Papa Murphy's in New York? No. Yeah, Papa Murphy's is a take and bake. And once once I had, you know, take and bake, I don't do frozen pizza anymore. Oh, okay, okay. Take and bake, uh, it's, uh, it's like frozen. You cook it yourself in your own oven and, oh, it's fresh. I mean, it's not cooked at all, right? Patrick, the uh, our web engineer, who yeah. moved out here and didn't know about Papa Murphy's, went into Papa Murphy's and ordered a pizza, <laughs> and they made it right in front of him and they handed it to him, <laughs> and he said, well, "What do I do with this? <laughs> you take it home and you cook it." <laughs> he wasn't. Wow. He didn't realize it was a take and bake place. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, I never heard of a take and bake. Wow. I thought you were talking about it, it comes prepackaged and okay. No, yeah, you know, it's a they will. You, it's a regular pizza place. You go and they make the pizza right in front of you, oh. but instead of putting it in an oven, they wrap it in plastic and they hand oh, it to that's, you. Oh, that's great. And it's, that's a, it's that's uh, great. You know, it's better than delivery because yeah. you get it fresh out of the oven. I enjoy. Yeah, it I, I, I think I think it's a great idea. What baby food company known for a baby pictured in its logo has the slogan? Start healthy, stay healthy. I know this one too. But baby food company known for the baby pictured on the logo has the slogan, start healthy. Wow. Now there's an, adver there's an advertising job. Well done. Wow. It is indeed. You do you, you know that, right? Oh, yeah. Kirby. Kirby. Everybody knows Gerber. Okay. Which animal does Dan and Yogurt feature on its Danimals smoothies? I didn't even know Dan and Yogurt had Danimals smoothies. Which animal does Dan and Yogurt feature on its Danimal smoothies thank you eric duckman been a long time since i've seen that answer oh my god <laughs> uh i don't think anybody has it yeah what animal heard... is associated with yogurt i have no idea yeah i know i know, I know. Uh, and i never knew that there was such a product as a Danimal smoothie. No. Uh, for what it's worth, the answer not on the, in the chat room is a monkey. A monkey. Um, oh, Jamie B, can you, can you Google? Uh, uh, Danimal, D-A-N-I-M-A-L-S, Danimals. Oh, Danimal smoothies. Be interesting to see what the container looks like. No. Oh, holy cow. There's a monkey. I see a monkey. Yeah, I do too. But did you know such a product existed? I I, I know Dan and Yogurt. I don't oh, know me that too. I've seen, I don't know that I've seen this product, no. No. Um, I have like eight Dan and Yogurts in the refrigerator right now. All right. All right, chat room. We're going to do our... I'm not saying you're a stupid question. Uh-uh. Oh, we did this one already. Okay. We go to the new batch here. Uh, um, oh. This is convoluted, but it's interesting. How many peanuts do you have to consume? What? 
Oh, oh I, this is going to be, I think it's going to be a, like a reverse funny answer. How many peanuts must you eat to consume the same amount of fat that there is in one cucumber? How many peanuts must you eat to consume the same amount of fat that there is in one cucumber? Eric, that that's that would be my answer. And Stooge, that's my answer too. Jim, have you, what's your answer? I don't think how many zero, peanuts must I don't you? think zero works. I'll go with one. Okay. Um, uh, um the answer is oh one. Wow. Who knew that cucumbers were fattening? Um, okay. How long? Oh, I don't even want to do that. Pokemon is known from both games and movies. What two words is Pokemon? This is very funny. A, a contraction somebody of tweeted. I saw it not tweet, toot, and Mastodon. Somebody said, Blank, blank. I just found out this is what t T I L. Today I learned blank, blank is what Pokemon stands for. I, I actually knew for a long time, but yeah. And the chat room knows oh. too. Oh, 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 oh. But just oh, yesterday, wow. somebody tooted that they just found that out yesterday. Wow. Uh, and I think there's a couple of porno movies with the same name. It is indeed. Pocket Monster. Not to be confused with Pocket Mobster. <laughs> In what decade did it become fashionable for women to wear lipstick? In what decade did it become fashionable for women to to wear lipstick. Got three twenties. Oh, look at all the twenties. Twenties sounds like a, a heck of a time. Can't wait. It to was. The yeah, 20s. I that's think they roar. I think. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I understand that if you're a woman and you put lipstick on, it makes you roar. <laughs> um. Boy, is there anybody who doesn't have 20? Let's look on the back. What decade did it become fashionable for women to wear lipstick? Absolutely, chat room, 1920s. Um, all right, let's do that little video. Um, we were touring Disneyland, and the last part of the tour is a couple minutes. of You know, I have something called Dick Skagit Warehouse, which is actually a warehouse uh, here, it's two blocks from here. Uh, but I bought home. Is it home... controlled? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it would still be cheaper than renting a place to live. Um, anyway, so here's the, the final part of the About tour. About four minutes left. Okay, good. Here we go. Here we go to kind of uh, a Gizwiz section. So these are some old components. But first, I'm going to show you something I showed on the Gizwiz, one of my favorite things, the dancing liquids. <laughs> okay. I love little niche things like this. They're like under 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, and I like the fact that even when they're not playing, they light up. Uh, kind of bright. So now, you know, we have Dick's Gadget Warehouse on the Gizwiz. These are Dick's Gadget shelves. So these are a collection of really old technology. Back in the 1970s, reel-to-reel -reel videotape. Uh, this videotape is Bill Gaines on To Tell the Truth. The uh, LG NV Touch, which had two screens, an outer screen and inner screen. Inside it was the uh, keyboard. Itty Bitty Book Lights sold millions. Remember that? World's first radio-controlled clock. 
it keeps terrible time uh, because it only checks at the atomic clock once a day if it can find it. That was $170 back in uh, 1985. That's the original Casio digital camera. $999.99. It had two megabytes of memory and could take 30 digital pictures and then uh, other stuff. But you want to know something? Casio was way ahead of their time. See the lens on the Casio? It flips over. Casio invented the selfie. <laughs> Pretty interesting, isn't it? Uh, so that's a lot of stuff. Oh, one other thing. So up there, King Kong. Bill Gaines is a big King Kong fan. And at Toy Fair, they had this giant ape. And I asked the guy if I could buy it. He said, what do you want a big ape like that for? And I said, for the publisher of Mad. He said, the publisher of Mad? When the show's over, I'll send it to him. Uh, and he did. And I'll show you a couple of other things. There's a Jack Day. Well, this is actually, this is where the, I guess this is really why I have a studio. This is where the show uh, comes from. So this is where I sit Aww, and talk to when Chad. Mary Jo Foley was on this Windows Weekly. This normally is where the chat room is. Uh, that's when I'm on Twitter. I can see it on that monitor up there. Oh, my premium, my Avast is running out. Well, that's okay, because I'm not renewing it. Um, and then normally my boats are up there, so I can tell what my boats are doing. There's the Inkpot Award, okay? That's the actual Inkpot Award. I'm really proud of that. Uh, and uh, Steven Spielberg did also win one. And Jack Davis did that picture of me when we were on a TV show. And then one of my favorite letters from George Lucas when I did the takeoff on Star Wars. George Lucas wrote and said, there should be an Academy Award for Dick D. Bartolo and Mort Drucker for satirizing my movie. And what's funny about it is three days after George's letter, we got letters from his attorneys. Uh, that is a copyright infringement, and we're suing Mad Magazine, and we want the eight pages of art, and we want the profits that those eight pages made. And I said to Bill, what are you going to do? And Bill said, I'm going to copy your letter and write across the lawyer's letter. Gee, George liked it. And he did. And we never heard from the uh, lawyers again. And there's a little marquee sign. I love this. You can, these are like $20 on Amazon. You can buy them. Uh, down there is stuff going or coming from the warehouse. There is an actual warehouse several blocks from here. I do have a lot of stuff. And I'm going to end with a very, very weird story. Mad closed on December 22nd. Okay. Uh, I cleaned out my office on December 23rd when I walked in here. This mad fan was on the shelf running. Okay? I, I really was taken aback because <laughs> it's not remote control. It's not Bluetooth. What turned it on? And since that day, it's never gone on by itself again. It was sort of like, well... <laughs> Welcome to everything you brought home from Mad Dick. Uh, we like it. Anyway, that's it. Dickie Martola, Mad's Maddest Writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. You're growing sleepy. Sleepy. Bye. Anyway, um, so that's the studio. That's the whole studio. And it's great. It's great fun. And as Leo, Leo and I were talking earlier, it's the ideal situation. I live in the apartment on the same floor in the back. So we did a gag, a gag thing on ABC. Is uh, ABC follows a Gizwiz uh, for a day at the office. So they show my apartment. And then uh, we say, and now let's go, let's travel with Dick to his office. And the camera starts out the door. And, and then I say, well, where are you going? I said, my office is right there. It's 15 feet away, just 15 feet of carpeting between uh, my, my home and my office. Uh, all right, people are saying where, well, we're going to do uh, some match game. Oh, Bill Gaines, man did a concert, Bill Gaines. Bill Gaines is the publisher of Mad, okay. Bill Gaines turned that on for me. Um, all right, we're going to play some match game. Let me get Dennis down here. And then I'm also going to make an announcement about match game. Sure. We're going to get Alex, right? Calling him now. Oh, okay, good. Uh, uh, uh.
Okay. Uh, what I thought I'd do is next week, and I offered, uh, I emailed uh, Myra about this in case she's home in time. Um, we're going to do a thing called Chat Room Celebrity Match Game Player of the Week. Okay. So if you just want to play match game, you'll call in via Skype and you'll be one of the players. All right. Uh, so I'm going to ask Myra to do it first. And if you want to be a player and play match game via Skype, so you'll be on for like three or four minutes. I can ask where you live. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. So it's a way to get more of the chat room involved. And, but you'll just be playing match game. Uh, um, write, okay. write your answers clearly and large enough that we can see them. Yes, you'll <laughs> just hold it up in front of the camera. Um, mm, mm, mm. Alex did not answer. Okay. Um, all right. The TV repairman said to dumb Dora, no wonder your TV doesn't work. You didn't plug it into a cable box. You plugged it into a blank box. Oh, I got a, I'll have a good answer. TV repairman said, the reason your TV doesn't work, you didn't plug your TV into a cable box, you plugged it into a blank box. Oh, I got a great answer. Maybe. A uh, bread box is great. Match box is excellent. Mailbox. Oh my gosh. I have no, I have no matches. Cardboard box. I have no matches either. Oh my God. Well, maybe we match each other. Maybe. Cereal box. All right, uh, Dennis, we're going to start with you. TV repairman said to Dumb Dory, TV doesn't work. Instead of a cable box, you plugged it into a blank it box. A uh, Jack, you plugged it into a Jack in the Box. Oh, you got him, yep. I thought this was a great answer. I said you plugged it into a window box. Mm. No. Jamma B, what was your answer? Plugged it into a... A busy box? Mm. That's what the, the kid for, you know, uh, infants, the little toy thing with infants with bottles. Oh, oh, things. That's oh a busy okay. Box. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, icebox. That's funny, too. Uh, mm, mm. Charlie, it's a little early. <laughs> I don't know. Jeremy, does that, can no, you hear that? I did not hear it. It's too now. Okay. Um, they said, my new car, my new car not only drives itself, it can blank itself. They said, my new car not only drives itself, it can blank itself. All right. Let's see. All right. Refuel. Hide itself. Clean itself. <laughs> Satisfy itself. Oh my God. Wash. Lube. Order McDonald's. Um, okay, Jammer B, we'll start with you. They said my new um, my new car can not can not only drive itself, it can blank itself. And Jamma B says, "Steal." Hi, Thanks for listening to Twit. Oh, you got a match, Logan Five. Steal itself. Um, I got a few matches. It can wash itself. And Dennis said, <laughs> "You didn't get anything." Okay. Um, Al and Burke is not there either, right? Today, uh, Burke was here. 
He may have gone home. I haven't seen him in the last oh, oh, half an okay. hour or so. So oh, okay. usually he runs okay. in if he wants to play. So he may oh, he may have okay. he may have gone home. Um. Well, one copywriter said to the other copywriter, "That is the stupidest copy line ever." The copy line being, "It's the blank Venus de Milo used." A stupid copyright, stupidest copy line ever. It's the blank Venus de Milo used. Charlie. <laughs> you're going to be on, Charlie. You're going to have a video and you're going to be on camera. Yeah. Uh, mittens. Oh, that's very good. Window said mittens, gloves, tennis racket, hand soap. These are, these are great. Elbow wash soap. Dumbest copy, dumbest copy line ever. It's the blank Venus de Milo used. Gloves. Uh, okay, Jammer B, you said Venus de Milo. The, it's the blank Venus de Milo used. Deodorant. Dickie D said it's the deodorant and Dennis Wonderland said uh oh you got to match it oh you did Dennis got ma nail polish Charlie in a minute okay we're gonna do another question and then you okay uh mm -mm. okay oh the hunchback of Notre Dame the hunchback of Notre Dame <laughs> Hunchback of Notre Dame said, I'm not really a hunchback. I keep my blank under my jacket. Charlie, stop. The hunchback of Notre Dame said, I'm not really a hunchback. I keep my blank under my jacket. Backpack, football, football. Oh, there we go. I got a match. I got a match again. Backpack, brother. Money. Oh, these are good, chat room. Uh, Dennis, we're going to start with you. The Hunchback of Notre Dame said, I don't really have a hunchback. I keep my blank under my jacket. And <laughs> I don't know if you got a match. I keep my wife under my jacket i think not jamma b i keep my blank under my jacket watermelon uh i got a match i keep my lunch or lunch pail uh lunch and lunch box are under there um don martin uh did a cartoon for mad it's the hunchback of notre dame at a roulette table and he has all his coins piled up on his back and he says red two and throws his head forward and all the coins from his back fly onto the table and he wins and the dealer says wow your hunch paid off <laughs> I thought that was very funny. It still had a ring to it. It has. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. That's very funny. Uh, all right. So, Charlie went to the groomer today, and the reveal will be live, but here is from a couple of hours ago. It's so sunny out. I my my phone picture is absolutely blank, but we're following Charlie to the groomer, and he's very excited. He pulls like crazy, and then when he gets to the door, he goes 
the groomer, well, you'll see it. Oh boy, Charlie, look. Come on, Charlie, look. It's true, Charlie. Yes, come on, it's true, it's the groomer. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, come on, the groomer is waiting. No, I'm not, I'm not going in there. I'm not, not the I thought groomer. we were going for treats. <laughs> not the groomer. Isn't that funny? I'm so excited up until the last one. <laughs> no. Oh, and they have a cat in there. So when Charlie came in, that was the cat howling. All right, so turn the overhead on, Dennis. Uh, and so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Charlie went to the groomer today. And then, all right, Charlie, hang on. Oh, boy, Charlie, let people see you are new. Grooming. Oh, look at that. Look at that boy. Look at that. Look at this. Charlie, look at you. I'm gonna weigh him again because I think he probably looks like too young. Oh boy, Charlie. Look at me. Yeah, I'm still running. Still rubbing his mustache against the wall. Oh. All right, Charlie. Yeah. All right. All right. That was great, Charlie. Yeah. You're the, oh, that was excellent. My, yeah, he's a handsome guy. Yes, just in time for the heat wave. Oh, my God. This morning, uh, I got up to go to the bathroom. It was 4.30 a.m., and it was 85 degrees. Oh, we have uh, today, tomorrow, Thursday, and I believe Thursday night we're going to get some severe thunderstorms and so that should uh cool things down a bit all right ladies and gentlemen tomorrow is giz whiz uh don't forget next thursday myra if myra hasn't responded and someone wants to play match game um send me an email so i'll, I'll know with your skype address yeah next wednesday uh, yeah. Exactly, exactly. That way I'll know if, if several people want to do it or not. All right. Um, you can do John at twit.tv or gizwizbiz at gmail. Either one of us. Um, or both. What is, let's see. Or both. That's a better That's a better idea. Bo do both. Martron said I was out most of the day when I got home. It was 100 degrees in my apartment. Wow. Oh, you know what? I forgot about the misting fan. I've been wearing the uh, neck fan, which is good, but the misting fan is better. I've got to get that out. Um, all right, so you've been watching regular, old-fashioned, unimproved Giz <laughs> Fizz. It's a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman, Dickie Bartolo, Dennis Wonderland, Raleigh the Dog, Gamma B, Scooter X, Loke One, Steven Toronto, Eric Duckman, Becky, Stude, Ranger Rick, Caesar, LA Eric, Geek Wannabe, Johnny Monday, Demos, Jamez, uh, Bill in Michigan, Magoo, uh, Mandy the Clown, Becky, of course, and maybe Myra Joyce is in here, I don't even know. Uh, what, the chat stopped? Oh. Uh, brought to you by Turtle Wax. Remember, it's not for turtles anymore. All right, chat room. We now usually have a song from Mr. Lear. Tom, Tom Lear. Lear. Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, so... This is a song called George Murphy. And I okay. couldn't remember at all what this song is about. I have no idea what the song is about. I mean, I, I, okay. I listened to the beginning. It's about a, a senator, a newly elected senator, I think in Minnesota or Michigan, something like that, 
apparently 60 years ago this was funny but okay <laughs> so, uh, wasn't wasn't he an actor at first oh i don't know george oh, murphy I remember maybe the song there was a george murphy actor so maybe like Ronald Reagan, he went into politics. Well, uh, I expect if that's the case, then Tom will make a joke about it in the song. Okay, that's what and I we guess. Will, we will find out when I press okay. the play button now. Okay, here this is George Murphy. Chat, chat room, this is great to see you tomorrow night, hopefully for Giz Wiz, and back next Wednesday for Giz Fizz. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, George. Okay, thank you, Jim. Screw you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. That's a real buddy for you. Okay, take care. Bye.